Hey, yo, what's going on, you guys? Tucker here with a brand new video today. Today, we're doing something a little bit different. Today, we're going to be going over the OTA cards that just got either buffed or nerfed. Red Hulk got hit hard. US Agent got a buff a week after his release. Jean Grey might be actually viable. And Jade Foster got a little bit of health. We got some other cards that, uh, that got hit a little bit too. Buffed. Maybe, maybe nerfed, but we're going to break them down right here. I'm going to show them all on screen here in just a second, and then I'm going to show some of these untapped decks that um, people have been using so far, um, and we can talk about how they maybe get better or how we can change things up. First card we have up is Mantis. On screen, she's a 2-2, but after the launch of the OTA, she will be a 1-2. Um, with this change, she'll be kind of be able to be able to play it on curve, like an Agent 13 or a Maria Hill. Um, potentially even a, you know, Quinjet if you don't want to play Quinjet instead, but like you're probably not going to be playing Mantis. Um, this is kind of just a card in case you don't have those other cards, um, in your deck, um, kind of thing to make them a little bit, a little bit viable. Um, it makes the card better, um, but I still don't see a lot of playtime for Mantis, um, post this OTA. Next, we have US Agent. His stats are the same. He's still going to be a two cost, three power, but his ability is going to be an ongoing negative four for four, five, and six cost cards. This is two weeks after his release. He's kind of getting the Hercules treatment a little bit. I don't necessarily think this makes this card too much better, but negative four does add up. Um, depending on the decks you're playing against, maybe you're playing this more into a C3 or maybe some Sarah Control shenanigans. Um, but still, like, the most big cards, like a Red Hulk hitting him with negative four power is pretty pretty decent, but nothing nothing crazy um, at the moment. Next, we have Gene Gray. Gene Gray over here is a 3-3 at the moment. Post-OTA, she'll be a 3-4. So it helps her perform better with taking over some priority. Um, it makes her feel just a little bit better. They were talking about X-Men 97 as is an is a influence on uh, Jean Grey getting a buff. So it's another good control card to have. Still nothing crazy, um, but, you know, we always, we always love Jean getting some love. Stature is finally back, my friends. She is going to be a 5-7 post-OTA. All stats was already making a comeback, but we're getting the original stat line for stature and it just feels so good. Being able to drop down a 1-7 on turn 6, potentially even turn 5, depending on what you played on curve, feels amazing. So I'm glad that stature's finally getting some love. Does that mean we're going to get Black Bolt some love soon? Maybe. Next, we got Jane Foster. Jane Foster on screen is a 5-8, but she's going to be a 5-9 um, post-OTA. I really wasn't seeing any issues with Jane Foster. I, I didn't necessarily think she, she needed a buff or anything, but maybe we're trying to play some more Asgard decks. Maybe Mr. Negative, they want to have a, a better win rate to have an extra one power for, for the Jane Foster. But honestly, it's a, it's a nice buff. It's a feels good buff uh, to Jane Foster. That one power to make her a 5-9, kind of to get close to like Thor range, uh, since Thor, you know, gets to five, uh, 310 um, when he gets Mjolnir. I like it. I, I do, I do, I do like it. And of course, the card that got hit the most, Red Hulk goes from a 611 to a 69. The decrease of two power, I don't think is anything too crazy because he still gets the plus four for each time you spend unspent energy. Um, so he still gets pretty huge, um, but his, his curve, I guess, if you float two times, it's not turning into a 619. It's turning into a 618 or 617, which I guess that's better because it's still um, smaller than like Infinite. But if you float, you know, three times, he's a 621 and he's still bigger than Infinite. And you can play him wherever. So it's an interesting change, um, but he's not not really dead by any means. He just lost two power. I think he's still super playable, um, but it kind of, I guess, helps you when you're facing him kind of on curve kind of thing. But good, good. Some pretty good changes here. Uh, nothing crazy. We still have the patch coming out on Tuesday, uh, but I'm excited to see how this shapes up the meta. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to break down um, some decks as well for these cards. So we're going to go in the same order um, that we started when we were talking about all the changes um, as well. Like I was talking about earlier with Mantis, Mantis really doesn't have a lot of play rate um, post infinite. So a lot of these instances like you're seeing here are more of some of these earlier pool one and pool two games. Um, so you could play Mantis on curve if you wanted to, if you wanted to be a little cheeky, but I still think at the end of the day, you're probably still not going to play this card, but it was a good change to Mantis to make her actually feel decent for what her ability is. Instead of a 2-2, two -two, the 1-2 just feels much better. Next, we have US Agent over here. I honestly had not seen any of these lists around. I haven't seen a lot of US Agent. I've seen him in some C uh, C3, some ongoing stuff. 
Um, this deck over here on the left with a 58% win rate. Um, I don't necessarily know if he is the reason for this, but this could be definitely a deck to use. Um, some of the cube rate is just not snapping when, when you know you need to snap or not retreating at the right time, but like 58% is really good. It's just need to get the cube rate up. So I can see this being a decent list too. You got the War Machine interaction with Storm, which is cool. Um, ongoing list for Spectrum. C3, C3, the, the win rate's not amazing, but I mean, you could you could maybe make this work. I don't, I don't hate this one. Discard, I don't know what this list is. So if anything, I would maybe play the these first first two lists. Um, but yeah, the, the change to US Agent is going to be interesting. I don't know how it's going to really shape things up, but it is a better stat for the card. Next, we have Jean Grey. Jean Grey also doesn't get a lot of play rate, but like with her having four power, maybe she gets a, a little bit um, extra, extra boost here. Um, another War Machine package, so you can play your other cards on five wherever you'd like. Um, we have an interesting toxic ongoing list that I've never seen before. Um, and these are all like based off like the previous um, patch and everything too. So he's not have, doesn't have a lot of play rate. The ongoing list actually um, makes a lot of sense. I do like this. I think this might be my friend uh, Dance's list actually right here. It is my friend Dance's list. He's got a lot of games with it and he's been using it a lot um, post infinite and it's been working really, really well. He also does the thumbnails. His link will be down in the description too. Um, another White Widow list, which is interesting, with um, some Ravona tech. I actually like this. This could this could be really cheeky. If I were to suggest anything for Jean Grey, it'd probably be these two lists um, right here. Next, we are moving on to stats over here. Um, so a lot of these lists, we do have an all stats kind of uh, Dark Hawk deck over here on the right over here. I can see that being viable. Some some Dark Hawk uh, shenanigans again. Uh, be able to play your Black Bolt, play your Dark Hawk final turn with a seven power stature. I like that. We'll probably be messing around with something like this over here on the right. I'm still not sure what, what is happening over here with this discard list. It's popped up again. Um, would not suggest really playing this one. It's kind of kind of all over the place. The synergy is a little weird. Black Swan for just Sunspot. I, I, don't, I don't agree with that one. Um, and then we have another Baron Zemo. Seen a lot of Baron Zemo stuff. But I think all stats, you could totally go back to an OG, and I mean like an OG all stats list, or even something like this. This actually looks pretty cheeky. You have your Ghost Rider, you have some Proxima stuff. Like this actually, you mill a little bit with Moon Knight. Um, you have some target discard, Ham to disrupt. Shang-Chi has another discard to be able to throw down a little bit later. This looks pretty solid. Um, so I'd play maybe something like this, or maybe something like with Gladiator. Um, Something something like this honestly is not bad because you're also you're milling, you're taking your opponent's cards with Zemo, also with cable, and then you're also discarding their cards. You got Iron Lad to hit most of his stuff is really, really good. So I, I like I like this general idea. Um, so maybe something like this, this list up here, or right below, and potentially this Dark Hawk list we see over here on the right as well. Moving on along, we got Jane Foster. If you guys know the Jane Foster list, you're going to be playing her a lot of negative. So that's what you're seeing over here on the left, um, which she goes freaking hard. You know, if you hit a Mr. Negative and someone Jane Fosters, more often than not, you need to retreat. You need to snap on the Jane Foster and your opponent needs to retreat. Or if you see the Jane Foster come down and they snap, you need to retreat. So either one of those, it's a it's a very tough situation for you if they have all these uh, zero cost cards they're able to slam down um, on the final turn. So that's gonna be awesome. And then I like this list on the right too. We got some hit monkey shenanigans. You know we love some hit monkey, um, and I like playing hit monkey with all the the hammers, which is something I did like originally when Beta Ray Bill came out. Um, and having Jade Foster with that extra one power kind of helps uh, hit monkey with his verticalness a little bit. So I think these two lists are gonna be like your token go to list that you're gonna see a lot of. Um, another one you might see is probably just an Asgard list. So it would be with Odin, like this kind of Jane Jaw kind of thing. So you have your your hammer, you have your Odin, you have your Jane, um, and you're playing your stuff on a Lockjaw, which works really well. Um, and then you also have this. This list is interesting. You got some Ravona shenanigans. Um, you're not really, I mean, I guess you're, you are drawing some of your zero drop or zero cost cards also with Mr. Negative. So I do like this. This is another spicy alternate Mr. Negative list um, that you could play as well. And then finally, we got Mr. Big Bad Red Hulk over here. You got a little, little, little nerf. I really don't think that two powers is anything crazy. Um, but of course, two of the best lists you can play right now is the mill list, which you're seeing over here on the right, which you're seeing a lot of people playing. You get some Shadow King value too, which is really good. Shang-Chi. And then of course, the Pixie list. Huge fan of this Pixie list. By the way, 
Um, Jeff Hoogland is the one who I believe made this list, and it goes crazy. People were running Red Guardian in it recently, but you can run Polaris in it um, instead. And yeah, I really do not think the decrease in power to Red Hulk is going to be anything crazy. Of course, you still have Hela. Hela is in a, an okay spot where you can just throw stuff down again, and Hela just pops off for you. Um, and then you got some zoo stuff. Lockdown. Lockdown with um, Red Hulk makes a lot of sense. Being able to play Rescue with Professor X is really good. Um, and I, this list looks really, really fun with the White Widow, the Nebula kind of shenanigans. Definitely something I would give a try if you want an alternate kind of kind of list. Um, and then there's just the Cannibal Professor X with Red Hulk as an alternate. Um, and then I think there's also, if you want to play Silky Smooth, you can play Silky Smooth. We don't have Silky Smooth here. This is also um, very good as well. This is Gnome's list. Gnome's Bounce Darkhawk Sentry kind of list with Red Hulk, which is also really, really solid if you wanted to uh, check that out. But yeah, that, that's going to be what we got going on. We got an OTA today. Um, those are all the changes we have and a couple decks for, for you guys to, to potentially mess around with. We're going to be messing around with some of them on stream. Uh, if you guys wanted to check out some content live, I will have my stream uh, link down in the description below. We do stream on Twitch. Um, and as always, if you guys stuck around, I really appreciate it. Um, please like comment and subscribe if you're new. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Until the next time, Tucker out.